Hey guys, as a lot of my long-term subscribers probably know, I used to make a lot of Korean cooking videos. I haven't really been doing that a whole lot lately because I've been traveling and it's kind of complicated to do in some of those small apartments that I've been in and hotel rooms and such. Plus you gotta have so many different ingredients and stuff. And it's just simpler to do other things, especially for making videos. But today I'm home and I'm gonna make the Korean beef bone stock. This stock also works great in other recipes, but it's really good for salongtang. But I'm gonna make a big batch today because I'm gonna be doing it for both. My wife wants salongtang tonight, so I gotta get cooking because this takes some time and there's no way to get around it, it takes time. Anyway, let me uh, readjust the lighting and cameras and I'll get back with you and show you what I got. Okay, so beef bone stock. Of course, I need some beef bones. These are like from the legs that have been cut into big pieces. Uh, we get these from a local butcher place. They actually bring in live animals and butcher them. It's a traditional butcher market, and we get a really good price on these. It's a lot cheaper than buying at the Korean market, and they're usually pretty good quality. My wife says these aren't quite as fresh as we get sometimes, but these are probably a week old. Uh, brisket. Uh, the flat is traditionally, like if you go to the Korean restaurants, you'll find that they cook with brisket. Now, luckily today in the market, I found a fairly small brisket because I don't need a whole bunch of brisket for doing this. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna trim that up here in a minute and I'll show you how I'm doing that. And I'm gonna be smoking part of that on the barbecue grill. So anyway, garlic, ginger, and a big pot and water. And that's really all you need. So anyway, I'm gonna get the bones in here and I'll show you that here in just a second. All right, so I got the bones here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cover them with water and I'm gonna let them soak for one hour. These are frozen. If they weren't frozen, you could go for just half an hour or so. Basically just starting the cleaning process. I'm gonna put enough water in here to cover these and then we're gonna let them sit for one hour. All right, so for the brisket, I'm gonna trim off some of this fat. For the portion that's gonna go in the sirloin tongue, I'm gonna get rid of a lot of the fat. What I'm gonna put on the smoker, I'm not gonna get rid of all of it. And when the fat's gonna go over here to the side, because we're gonna, we can render that down for something else. Now we cut a big hunk of fat off right here. And we're gonna take this and we're gonna go under here. And I've got two pieces. This is what's gonna go for our soup. I'm gonna continue trimming that up. And I'm gonna cook this on the barbecue grill. All right, so we've got our brisket flat all trimmed up. And I'm gonna put it in a pot of water and we're gonna let it sit there for about an hour and let some of that nasty stuff kind of come out of it. If I say bloody, somebody's gonna say, ah, oh, it's not blood, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, it's bloody looking nasty stuff and I don't want it in my bean. All right, so now I got my pot. It has the brisket in it. Go here, see all that nasty stuff we're washing off. Go ahead and take our brisket out. Wash the pot. Wash your brisket off a little bit. Put it back in the pot. Cover it with water. Now we have our pot with our beef bone. We're basically going to do the same thing. Except I'm not going to put the bones in the strainer. Not this time. Pour that out. We'll put the bones on the stove. All right, so in this pot we have our brisket and it's just covered with water. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn that on. We're gonna start heating that up. In this pot here, we're gonna cover these bones with water again. And we're gonna turn this on. And we're gonna heat it up and we're gonna bring, it, bring both of them to a boil. And we're gonna boil both of them for about 30 minutes. 
Okay, so the brisket was at a boil for 30 minutes. See all that gunky stuff? I don't want that. Anyway, let's get the brisket in the strainer. There we go. I'm going to wash that off. We also need to wash our pot. All right, so we've got some, we're putting some water back in our pot. We're going to put our brisket back in there. We're going to cover our brisket and we're going to put it back on the stove. Now we're going to do the same thing for our bones. Now this pot's really heavy, so you may want to scoop off it some other way. You know. Had that water running, maybe you didn't hear. Anyway, what we're looking for is we're looking for a good clean soup. And all that gunky stuff, we want that gone. You don't want that in, in your soup. It won't be milky, It'll, it won't turn out right. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna wash these off camera and get everything going. And I'll be back with you here in a minute. Okay, so my brisket's coming back up to a boil. My bones have been washed. And what I'm gonna do is in the stock pot where my brisket's at, I'm gonna put a little ginger. Just a couple cloves of garlic over here with my bones. I'm adding a big old chunk of ginger and a handful of garlic. We're going to put some fresh water in here. And we're going to bring this to a boil. Not a simmer, a boil. It needs to be boiling because the boiling will leach out the calcium magnesium from the bones. Now, as the level in this pot goes down, I'm gonna make it up with water from this pot. And I'll just slowly keep transferring it over. When my brisket gets done, I'll take it out. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. Okay, so now this is coming up to a boil just how I want it. And this is, when I talk about boiling instead of simmering, this is what I'm looking for. I don't need a rapid boil. So here, whenever that does come up, and when the boil starts to get rapid, I will reduce the heat a little bit and I'm taking off the fat and foam that come up to the top but notice how the water is still clear it's not getting any of that gunky stuff that it had before and that is what we want well, it's pretty easy from this point on out it just takes time and lots of time okay so our water level is going down so we're going to take some of our water we're cooking our brisket in we're going to top it off and then we're going to put more water in our with our brisket all right so we're going to test our brisket and see if it's done stick a chopstick in there just easily slides out yeah i'd say that's done so we're going to take our brisket and put it in some ice water now if you don't have brisket or can't get brisket you can use a chuck roast those work pretty good too now i'm putting in ice water so that it'll cool quickly and it doesn't turn gray. We'll need some green onions. We're gonna go ahead and chop these up. I like to slit these ends because they're kind of thick. Chop these up kind of fine. Okay, so our beef is chilled. It's no longer hot. I wanna cut it across the grain. So as you can see, the grain's running like this. Like that. Okay, so let's talk about where we're at. We gotta catch up a little bit. I boiled my stock for about three hours at a slow boil constantly skimming off any fat or scum that came off the top of that. After that, I jacked the heat up and I brought it up to a boil. And I'm using the lid, you know, to keep things going. But anyway, this thing is basically ready for me to skim off the first batch. So I have a pot here. Let's go ahead and turn, let's just turn that off. I've got a pot here to put my soup in. And this pot, I've just got water and I'm, 
heating it back up because I'm going to have to replace the water that I take out of here. And if I already have water that's hot, it'll come back to a boil faster. I know this is like a 12 hour process and I'm talking about saving a few minutes, but hey, it makes me feel better. You don't have to, you don't have to do this. You could just put cold water in there turn the burner back on and bring it back up to a boil. Or you don't really have to do the second boil, but I think I've gone to all this expense and trouble. I might as well do at least a second boil. And this process is pretty simple. We're just got a strainer. We're gonna just put our soup in here. The bones are still feeling pretty heavy, so they've got a lot more good stuff to give up. Whenever they get really light, that's when we know we're done making soup. Okay, so we have most of the liquid out of here. We're gonna go ahead and turn this back on, put it on high, and then we're gonna take our water that we've been preheating and we're gonna start adding to this pot. And we're gonna fill it all the way back up. All right, so our second batch has been going for about an hour and 45 minutes. It's nice and milky white looking. That tells me it's time to strain it off and it's gonna be the exact same thing on this batch as the last one. And just like last time, we're gonna take some of this hot water and we're gonna put it in our pot and we're gonna bring this back up to a boil. Now this time, the bones are starting to get a lot lighter. We're probably gonna boil for probably about two to maybe three hours, and this will probably be our last batch. Okay, so now our soup has been boiling for another two and a half hours, and this is the last boil that I'm gonna do on it. The bones have pretty much given up everything they're gonna give up. So we're just gonna take this last little bit of liquid or soup and we're gonna put it into, I got a separate pot here because my other one's getting full. And now so that I can get to my soup a little better, I'm gonna take these bones. I'm just gonna put them in the sink for right now, let them cool off. Now they are a lot lighter than when we started. I could probably boil these one more time, but we're not gonna get a whole lot of flavor out of them. And so I kind of hate to waste, waste the gas boiling them one more time. Okay, so an update on where we're at. We've got our big pot washed out and cleaned. That is one of the hardest things about this is all the cleaning. You gotta clean bones, you gotta clean pots. And then add on top of that because I am filming, I'm cleaning the stove all the time and this and that. Anyway, cleaning is one of the hardest parts. Now, we're gonna do the final mix. You can ladle this. If it's hot, ladle it. Oh, look at there. Still got some left in here. Now this is still a little warm. We're basically just gonna go back and forth a little bit on these so that we get a good mix. And now I'll take some of this and I'll put back in here. So, we've got a big pot of soup here, and what we're going to do is we're going to freeze it in bags. It's cooled down, it hasn't gotten a room temperature, but it's pretty cool right now. So I've got the bag rolled over. I'm putting enough in here like whenever we want to use it. We think this or a little more. We can put it under there. So then we'll take the bag and we're gonna almost seal it up. Push a lot of the air out. Make sure it seals really good. And then what we're gonna do is we'll lay this down like this and we'll put it in the freezer and let this set up and then we'll take, and then we can stack them up pretty easy. Okay, so let's talk about what we got going on here. I've got my pot with my 
soup in it. It's been in the refrigerator, so it's nice and cold, it's gelatinous. Believe me, ladies, that's good for your skin, nails, hair. Now, if you want it to be traditional, cook it in a pot like this. I'm just gonna use that, that's fine. But if you wanna impress your friends, use something like that. I am gonna serve it in this bowl, so I got that ready. I've got a pot of water heating up right here. Actually, it's hot, it's boiling. I've got my potato starch noodles. These are the same ones that you use for uh, making chapche. They've been soaking for a little more than an hour and they're basically ready to be cooked. But I need to get my soup pot first. So let's go ahead and turn that on. And whenever that comes up the temperature a little bit, we'll start cooking our noodles. Okay, my soup is coming up to temperature. It's not boiling yet, but it will be. It's gonna take about five minutes to cook these noodles. Basically, we're gonna cook them till they're clear. Now, I've already poured the water off of them, or most of it anyway, just so it's easier to handle. Basically, you want these to sit in here and simmer for about five, five minutes or until they turn clear. So they pretty much got a lot softer just as soon as they hit that hot water. Anyway, we're gonna let them cook. All right, now this is only, this only took about two minutes, but my noodles, they look done to me. So what I'm gonna do, put, them in, put some of them in the bowl. Okay, our soup, our soup's at a boil. So we're gonna go ahead and turn that off. We're gonna put some in our bowl. There we go. All right, now we're serving this with some kimchi. We've got a cucumber kimchi and a, and a moo kimchi. Uh, takugi. Anyway, I made, I made these two. Had my wife helping me. But here we're gonna put a little beef on here. Like that. We're gonna sprinkle on a few green onions. Got some salt. Salt seems to be a controversial ingredient. Uh, what kind of salt to use, if you should use salt. I like a little salt in mine, keep it from being so bland. You can get pepper, white pepper, black pepper, whichever one you like, it's all up to you. I like a little black pepper in mine. Not too much. There we go, about like that. Anyway, that's lunch. Okay, so how's our soup taste? That's good. Real rich. A little spiciness from the green onion. It's kind of bland, but that's what it's supposed to be. But I do want to maybe put a little bit more salt, but eating it with the uh, spicy and strong ki kimchi, it kind of helps round everything out. Anyway, hope you guys give it a try. It is a lot of work, but give it a try sometime. It'll work for you.